Okay. I forgot to bend it. I was like, I'm gonna break it. Stop letting <laughs> I'm overstimulated. <laughs> I'm gonna spill my coffee. I'm gonna Not again. Coffee. I'm gonna spill this, the wire. Hi, podcast besties. Hi, besties. Welcome back to another great episode of the Isn't That Odd podcast. And all things spooky pod. And we're your hosts. I'm Brianna. And I'm Paul. Happy Pride Month, besties. Happy Gay Month, you gays, girls, and days. Not yeah. the girls, unless you're gay. Don't single out the girls. It's the girls, gays, and days. Yeah, but... It's literally no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no butts, no nuts, no, no butts, butts, no, no, no nuts, no butts, no coconuts. No, lots of butts this month. Especially no coconuts because I fucking hate that song. Give me the butts. <laughs> we get it enough. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, be who you are for your pride. You've, you've made it so many episodes without singing and i'm li- i was so proud and i have to that's it. like the iconic uh theme song of pride month is it yeah says who it says tiktok and me hmm. 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 yeah so happy pride month that's how i got oh. <laughs> yeah i was like i, I just said that <laughs> anyway may your wildest dreams come true this month yeah um do a lot of butt stuff in my honor so (laughs) today (laughs) i was not expecting to say that so for today's episode we got some great stories as we always do because what else would we bring to the table we're not going to bring you some junk yeah mine is a paranormal story and it's mine's amazing it's iconic it's a local New England story. What category is yours? Ooh, today I have true crime, and it's actually a well-known true crime story, because they made a movie off it. So, kind of like how in episode one you did The Conjuring? Yeah. Uh, except this one isn't necessarily one of my favorite stories. I mean, I, I enjoy the movie. Uh, Do you think I know it? Yeah. I'd be really shocked if you didn't know Have it. I talked about it before? No. Hmm. I don't know if you'll necessarily know the background of it, but I know you'll know the movie, at least know of the movie. Hmm. It's it's an iconic horror film. It's part it's part of the iconic uh, I'm villains. I'm trying to like guess and I villains? I don't fucking know. If you want to call them villains, yeah. Hmm. You know, there's like Freddy Krueger, Jason, and all them. I don't know. It's like one of them. It's one of them? No, but oh. it's like one of like those iconic hmm. staples. Know. I don't know. Yeah, good thing is I go first today. <laughs> yeah, I know, so um, I don't have to guess for long. But it's fine. It's it's been a minute. How you been? Tell me all about your life. How you been? How you been? How's your how's your dog? How's your cat? How's I don't have a dog. <laughs> Stop. Never mind. I had a really bad joke, and I was like, they listen to this. I don't want to be mean. Um. <laughs> um. I. Have been grow- going. I was like growing. Growing. I have. I'm been- a grower. <laughs> a grower, not a shower. Yeah. Um, I have been no going. Shame in my game. The fuck through it. Mm. You know that. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of people know that because I've been posting about it. A I lot won't- of people. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people. Mm. <laughs> a lot of people. Mm. <laughs> I got a point. <laughs> Sorry. Um, we'll get into it on the podcast because it's a lot. Um, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thankfully, I have therapy today. We love that. Yeah. Um, cut off some baggage. Happy for that. We love to hear that. Love to hear that. So it's we're all about the the self care. Yeah. That surrounding with positivity only vibe. Yeah. Made me realize. A lot of things. Open my eyes to a lot of things. A lot of baggage I've been carrying around that I don't need to carry anymore. So thankful for that. Oh my god, 2023 is just a year. Yeah, let me tell you. Um, 
I feel like everybody realizes this that I'm pretty like open like with mental health and stuff like that. I talk about it all the time. Like I feel like every every episode I'm like I take Zoloft, you know. And that's what I'm trying to do too. I talk about you it all the time. Get rid of the stigma. Let me tell you guys, the Zoloft is Zolofting because like <laughs> <laughs> it's been helping me so much. Like I've only been taking it, I think, for I don't even know how long I've been taking it for, but like it's doing its fucking thing. So it's the Zoloft is Zolofting. Let me just tell you that. Which helps me because we had a great conversation the other day. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> We were- and it essentially just boiled down to I am just afraid of medicines that is anything prescription. So like mm. obviously Tylenol, the yeah. over the stuff, over the counter stuff. I mean, it's it's it not that it stuff. It's, it's not like- that. Yeah, it's like the serious stuff, like the Zoloft, yeah. and like even harder stuff than that. I'm just like <laughs> like hyperventilate. Mm. Um, which is really understandable because like everybody's different. At the end of the day, it's like so some people like a lot of people when I told them I started taking Zoloft. Like, some people are like, oh, be, like, be careful, because, like, some people have, like, more suicidal thoughts on them, like, things like that. So it's and like, I, that, I think that's essentially what scares me the most, yeah. is not even necessar- necessarily the getting, like, addicted to it or anything like mm-hmm. that, because I don't, I don't know if it's a off addiction is a thing. It might be. Who knows? Um, it is a thing if you, your body does become some kind of addicted to it. So, like, if you decide to stop taking it, you have to, like, slowly be weaned off of it. Because it. if you just stop taking it, your body can go yeah. into withdrawal. And I feel like that is what scares me the most is like stuff is is, it's just stuff like that that's how it is when you take a lot of stuff though when you think about it so it's like but i mean you i was worried about that kind of stuff too and again i already told you i'm not trying to push you into taking anything i'm just giving you like my perspective on it just so you can have somebody's perspective on it um which is really what i need yeah i was worried about that stuff too you know me everybody knows this i'm a stressed i'm stressed about (laughs) fucking everything I get stressed about about everything. <laughs> I'm overwhelmed at all times about everything. But like, I kind of I don't know. I just one day was just like, I'm never gonna know unless I try it. And like, <laughs> I had a meeting with a psychiatrist, and I cried during my meeting with a psychiatrist. And I have no shame in talking about this kind of stuff. Like, people are gonna listen to this, and I don't yeah. care. At the end of the day, it's like I got the help that I needed, and like at the end of the day, it gets better. And that's what I want people to know is that it does get better. Yeah. So 2023 is that year for us. It should be yeah. that year for you if you're comfortable. And always so, talk to professionals i no, mean literally, this, is, yeah. this is all just our our takes and yeah, our opinions this is but. candid as fuck man i don't care and i cried when i talked to the psychiatrist and i was like i need help like i just want help and that's basically it and like if you think that taking the medication would be helpful for you then i think that you should at least look into it not even not even get on the medication because i would never push that on you but i think mm-hmm. you should look at least look into i feel like it is it. a i've come to the point where i'm so sick of the mood swings that i go through that i'm kind of just like if if it's something that's gonna help like (laughs) like you said it's it at this point i'm just like it's worth a shot for me that's how i felt and how i described it was like i'm just sick of feeling this way that's that's just how i described it like i'm just sick of feeling and it it is annoying because it's exhausting a lot of it is because a lot of the swings that i go through there's no who there's knew no, that the intro to this episode yeah, was right? gonna be like a mental health talk it's like babe do you want to and then i'm gonna talk about people slaughtering people so yeah. that's fine um, <laughs> that's great, fine great intro to that welcome to the podcast uh, yeah. <laughs> you never know what you're gonna get uh but yeah a lot of my a lot of my swings will just be like me drive like there'll be no triggers and it'll just be me driving and suddenly my thoughts are just everywhere i'm just mm-hmm. like i'm so i'm so sick I just, it's so it's exhausting it's so mentally exhausting and i was like saying this again when i was talking like it should not be this hard and like for some people who are listening to this might not resonate with what we're saying and like for those people they don't understand how lucky they are yeah but for those people who do resonate they understand what we're saying it should not be this hard and it's like when you say it when it, you say it out loud it's like you get it but like it should not be this hard to live your life basically right. at the end of the day should not just be some hard. extra hurdles for us no big deal yeah um so but, yeah c- case in point before we get off <laughs> too much of a tangent <laughs> we'll save this for the hot it's, topic it, yeah <laughs> it's that it's that sort of year babe take care of yourself 2023 it's all about you self-care we're here to release that stigma from yeah. you so if you're worried don't be worried babe we got you. our dms are always open our emails are always open we're always here for you this is a safe space. We love you. I'm pretty sure between Brown and I, we cover a lot of uh, mental disorders. Yeah, so. you think that <laughs> you think like the LGBTQ plus is a spectrum, babe. We're the spectrum. <laughs> so if you need help, let us know. We'll yeah. forward you to the correct individual to yeah. give some advice. <laughs> but anyways, uh, yeah, take care of yourself as always. Like we always like to say, um, we're we're a podcast of positivity even though our stories we talk about may be kind of dark at the end of the day they're stories to let mm-hmm. you know have some fun with well i mean they are stories that but they do involve real people but at the end of the day we do respect everybody we talk about i know we do come off as like joking and 
I know that some people do get quote off put by some of the things we do talk about and the way we say them and things like that but at the end of the day we do try and be lighthearted about things because how heavy they are Mm -hmm. but at the end of the day we do want people to take care of themselves and take care of each other and things like that so and if we can help we're always here to help exactly and with that let's talk about slaying yeah with that the floor and not the gay kind of slay i mean the (laughs) the chainsaw kind of slay oh Um, my god (laughs) and with that shitty fucking joke the floor is yours my dear (laughs) Okay. Yes, and queen. Give me scene. nothing. Oh, no. That's... <laughs> never mind. <laughs> that was for you. That was no, specifically I, uh, for you. No, I know. We made that joke about an hour ago. I know. That was specifically for you. That was for nobody else. <laughs> that was just for you, bestie. Anyway, oh, thanks, bestie. <laughs> thanks for reminding me of my situation. Um, anyways. <laughs> Not me crying. <laughs> Some people... <laughs> <laughs> can i just tell you i also love i used to edit the fuck out of these episodes where these little spats would not be in and now i love that this podcast has mainly turned into us just laughing and breathing into oh my place. god speaking of spats <laughs> that me a spat and a spat me, shut up that voice right there reminded me uh i was talking to brenna shout out brenna great friend of mine hi brenna um, i love you and she's she's a podcast listener hi brenna we we adore you um, me and brenna became friends at paul's christmas party and i made brenna become my best friend that night <laughs> brenna is now my best friend um <laughs> <laughs> that night i was like self-conscious i was like i don't want to make brenna be my friend but also the same time like brenna if you leave my side i'm gonna cry yeah i did a really good thing where i introduced brianna and brenna and i was like yeah this is so and so this is so and so bye and then i just laughed and i was like but we be vibed fine so well we had so many things i knew they in. would so i was just like i'm gonna leave them together and um, then at the same time i was like um don't leave and then brenna was also like yeah don't leave and i was like <gasps> And then we both, yeah, it was great. <laughs> it's like a mini trauma bomb. I know, it was amazing. <laughs> uh, but she was saying yesterday, um, in Snap, she sent me a picture of episode 17, because oh, no. she's a true listener and <laughs> listens when we drop. Um, and she was saying, not you not you talking like me or some shit. And she was like, tell me your voices you guys weren't doing were like the straight white girl ally voice. <laughs> what were we saying wait it was like the the beginning where i was like almost like valley girlish voice like right before we went into like the baby voice <laughs> <laughs> and then i listened back to the episode where she was and i was like that's so funny um because i heard the voice i was doing and it was, it was great so shout out to brenna just unintentionally talking shit about one of your best friends no, that's just, just so funny. It was just a voice. She was just like, <laughs> not you, like, doing my sort of voice. And I was like, do you actually talk like that? And I was like, I played back, and I was like, oh, girl. <laughs> You're just channeling her and not even... <laughs> so fucking funny. Shout out to you, Benna. Uh But no, it was really funny. And then, because um, she said straight white girl ally, mm. and I was like, speak, Valentina. <laughs> ally. <laughs> ally. <laughs> Not during Pride Month. <laughs> yes, during Pride Month. Oh, no. <laughs> and that brought to you by the Trevor Project. <laughs> oh. No, we don't get ads like that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that was a funny story. I just needed to tell why I thought. Oh, about I love it. that for you. Thank you. Um, okay, now I'll actually go on my story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that we're 15 minutes into Oh, I love the banter. I love that first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. <clears throat> and scene. Scene. I don't even want to say it. <laughs> I'm going to shut the fuck up, I promise. Some people like me (laughs) just don't even give you a chance to get there. We enjoy a good horror flick. A nice psychological thriller to get our blood pumping (laughs) and give us an extra thrill or scare and a bid to spice up your day or night. Not me. Typically night. I'm a pussy. Yeah. Or maybe some scary things like this for the Halloween season just to fit the mood and really get into the spirit. It's June. (laughs) Movies like Psycho... Or the later Bates Motel series, which, honestly, great show. Did you ever watch that? Um, I watched the first season, and then I got bored. Okay, hater. Um, I am also a hater, (laughs) yes, correct. (laughs) The Silence of the Lambs movies are even the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, a really great movie to give you a huge scare. Oh, are you talking about the guy with the nipple Mixed with tons of gore. (laughs) Mixed with tons of gore and really everything you'd expect from a horror movie pause the sentence what the fuck did you just say are you talking about the guy with the nipple belt with the nipple belt yeah no oh <laughs> what kind of fucking fetish porn are you watching <laughs> go ahead <laughs> go ahead oh. go ahead <laughs> go ahead 
<laughs> you said Texas Chainsaw Massacre, so I thought you'd talk about the guy with the nipple belt. He doesn't have a nipple belt. He's based off the guy who made the nipple belt. Go ahead. Don't worry about me. <laughs> the secret. I just. Okay. The That's secret the, sauce to these movies and shows sauce. is not only in the script writing and the actors, but the main source of crazy for these movies actually stems from five words based on a true story. And for today's story, we're going to dive headfirst into the serial killer that is the inspiration for all of these gore fest movies that I just mentioned, and that is none other than Mr. Ed Gain, or the so-called Butcher of Plainfield. Yeah, isn't he the guy with the fucking nipple belt? In my research, I saw nothing about a nipple belt. Isn't he the guy who takes people's skin and makes stuff? Yeah. Yeah, he has a fucking nipple belt. I never... I promise you... Right? I don't know. Google who's a serial killer with made nipple. nipple belts and skull bones. Yeah, skull right? bowls from corpses and murders to I, make yeah. skin suit. I know how the skin suit. He made a nipple belt. I didn't see the nipple belt. <laughs> you, I can't believe you didn't see the nipple belt. <laughs> I probably <laughs> skimmed over I, it on you, purpose. You saw everything else, but how do you skim over <laughs> a nipple belt? And you could you just imagine someone making a belt out of your nipples? <laughs> so Ouch! Painful. <laughs> You just skim over that. I don't know how large the areolas were to That's what I'm belt. saying. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> you said, I'm sorry, what? I said, the guy from Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the mo- it's based on, you said, no. I said, y'all the fuck, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. I was, so I do know this case. <laughs> okay. For those figured... who didn't see, I just flipped Paul off. Yeah, she did. Now I don't want to do my story. The podcast oh, is over. No, stop. <laughs> I want to hear it. Now, before I go into this, if you've seen these movies, especially Texas Chainsaw Massacre, or have even heard about what their plot line is. Also, I hate myself because I used the wrong there. You know, like T-H-E-R-E-T-H-I-R-E-T-E-T-H-E-I-R. You know, I used the wrong one. I'm not a grammar. You can't say this word anymore because it's not nice. Okay, great. But I always do, so I can't say anything. Now, before I go into this, if you've seen these movies, especially Texas Chainsaw Massacre, or have even heard about what their plotline is, you know the movie is filled with nastiness, gore, and everything in between. Mm -hmm. Aside from, you know, just casual killings. And nipple belts. And nipple belts. So it is safe to s- <laughs> it is a safe assumption that those themes are going to be prevalent in my storytelling here. So please take care of yourself, and as always, skip if you need to. If you don't like these themes, or you just don't care to listen to them, because yeah, it can to- it can get pretty pretty uh, gory and gross. Go to my story; it's not gory and gross. I yeah. promise. I won't take any offense, as we always want the best for you, the listener. So this is your warning. I'm not warning again. So if you don't listen to me now, that's a you problem, babe, not a me problem. <laughs> I was so fast aggressive. <laughs> it's just who I am. Now, before I get into the crimes and what led Ed Gain to be known as the Butcher of Plainfield, let's dive into his early life and get a more holistic look at who he was as a person leading up to these crimes. Born Edward Theodore Gain on August 27th of 1906 in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Ed was a child of deeply rooted religion and a crazed mother, Augusta, who was very domineering and believed the world was filled with evil. Hmm. Funny. Anyways, her preaches... Hmm? Oh. Her preaches highlighted the evils of drinking and her belief that all women, aside from herself, of course, uh, were naturally promiscuous and instruments of the devil himself. Ed and his brother Henry were raised by Augusta initially in La Crosse before moving to Plainfield, Wisconsin, because La Crosse was a, quote, sinkhole of filth, and Augusta wanted to protect her family from the evil in which she believed lurked around every corner. Even when they moved to Plainfield, she moved them to a remote farmhouse because she believed living in the town would corrupt her two sons. Now at this time, Ed and Henry's father was in the picture, but their mother hated him because he was an alcoholic who was unable to keep any sort of job working as a carpenter, tanner, which in this case, a tanner is someone who treats skins and hides of animals to produce leather, not like someone who's in like a tanning salon. I thought you were going to say that he owned like a tanning salon. No. <laughs> I was going to uh, say. That's why I wanted to, I wanted to put that disclaimer <laughs> You saw me look at you like, yeah. hello. Uh, An insurance salesman. Unfortunately, not much else would be highlighted about their father besides his death due to heart failure in connection to his alcoholism in 1940. April 1st, to be exact, which is kind of unsettling in itself. 
Now, his mother <laughs> truly taken the reins over both of their lives. The two boys would only see the outside world in the way of school. Here, Ed would fail to really establish any meaningful connections with any classmates, and those who remember him only remember a socially awkward kid that was prone to odd and rather unexplained fits of laughter. Which, hello? <laughs> just imagine being in class, and the kid next to you is just like, <laughs> just like laughing for no apparent reason. I um, remove myself away from those kids because they are... <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah. So additionally, Ed seemed to have a little bit of a lazy eye and a speech impediment. I can. I have a lazy eye. I also have a lazy eye. Um, which unfortunately made him an easy target for the bullies in the school. Relatable. Although Ed wasn't allowed to roam away from their farmhouse and really had a leash around him by his mother, he still adored her very much and absorbed whatever lessons about the world she had to share, regardless of how harsh. Now, granted, we already went over. She's a crazed fucking. Lady. I already forgot that you said that this was um, the the movie Psycho was based off this. Mm-hmm. I was like, hey, this is kind of like the movie Psycho. Yep. <laughs> and I was like, wait. <laughs> Weird. He took her word as gospel, basically. The same can't be said entirely about Henry, though, as he did, in fact, stand up to her a few times. But Ed just never would. With his brother seemingly acting out and pressing the words of their mother, who, as I just mentioned, was taken as gospel by Ed, it's not particularly surprising that Ed's first murder victim would turn out to be likely none other than his older brother, Henry. Hmm. Taking us now to May 16th of 1944, Ed and Henry were sent out to the field by their mother to clear some vegetation by simply burning it away. Normal. A rather normal practice, and honestly, sometimes can be easier than, you know, ripping them and throwing them and, you know, whale-bearing them around, whatever. Just burn them. They become natural fertilizer. It's all fine. The sad part of this adventure, though, is only one of the brothers would make it back to the house following that day's work. As the two of them started working in the field, the fire they set for the vegetation would suddenly get completely out of control. This would, as expected, lead to firefighters rushing to the house and immediately working to put out the flames. When Ed would be asked where Henry was when he got back towards the house, he would say that he was just simply, he vanished. It wouldn't be until firefighters put out the fire that Henry's body would be found by a search party, face down in the marsh, completely lifeless due to asphyxiation. Asphyxiation is... Suffocation, basically. That's what I thought, okay. (laughs) On the surface, this is merely a tragic incident. A fire that had gone out of control and a brother that sadly perished due to the circumstances at hand. But it should be noted that initial thinking was death due to heart failure, since he had no burns or injuries otherwise. Although, it would later be reported by biographer Harold Sketcher that Henry actually did have bruises on his head. However, in the end, authorities would dismiss the possibility of foul play and the county coroner would leave us with the asphyxiation cause that we have today. Just a couple small eyebrow raises for this one, I think. Hmm. Mm. Now, moving past this event, all we know for sure is Ed is now completely left alone with Augusta, the mother he adored very much, without a back-talking brother to get in the way of the pair. Convenient? The pair would live in the typical isolation until Augusta's death on December 29th, 1945, at the age of 67. This is, of course, destroyed Ed, as he can be quoted as saying he had, quote, lost his only friend in one true love, and he was absolutely alone in the world. Giving I'm, Norman Bates. I'm convinced he would have fucked his mom. Oh, easy. And that, just reading that and, like, writing that, whatever, they just immediately, Mm -hmm. Bates Motel. Crazy. I did, like, the first season of Bates Motel, but everything after that, I was just like, hmm. It's really good. You should watch it. I'd recommend. Hmm. Anyways. This would leave Ed Gain... (laughs) (laughs) Anyways. (laughs) This would leave Ed Gain in a position of decade-long descent into depravity and a life void of morals, values, or even the simple regard for other living things things dun 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 and the nipple belt and the nipple belt i can't believe you didn't know about the fucking nipple belt the one thing i forgot how do you forget shut up as can be seen 
As can be seen and featured in the media works that I mentioned at the beginning that follow the story, Edward transformed the farmhouse into nothing shy of a shrine to his mom's memory. He would go on to board up rooms that she used to use, ensuring they stayed in pristine condition, and moved himself into a small bedroom off the kitchen. Now, Ed and Henry being kept far from the town and isolated begins to play a huge role here, as Ed is now alone in terms of everyone around him is dead, and he is very far from the town that he was essentially barred from for his entire life. Ed's complete isolation would be a catalyst for him sinking into his obsessions. He would go on to fill his days by learning about Nazi medical experiments, studying human anatomy, consuming porn, because, of course. Why not? You know, got um, past time somehow. Right. Might he, as well jack off. Exactly. Um, I'm bored, you know. Even though he had never simply attempted to date any woman in real life or anything. Besides Just his mom. Born. Right. Um, and fitting to the theme, he would also consume his time with horror novels. That's a that's a lovely combination. Porn and horror. And just being alone. You might as well just watch a snuff film. True. This is also the time he would begin to indulge in his sick fantasies. However, it would be a long time coming until anyone would learn about this particular piece of his story. I was just about to do that because you're looking at me so dramatic. I was like, I have nothing to say, so I'm looking at me like that. For what it's worth, Ed was completely absent from anyone's mind for a full decade. No one in town would think about him, and he was mentally and physically an outsider and loner. To be fair, if a kid um, was weird like that in high school, I would also try and forget about him as well. So. Same. However, Ed would finally start to creep into the townies' minds starting in November of 1957 as a local hardware store owner named Bernice Warden would suddenly vanish. The only clue to her disappearance was that of bloodstains and the fact that she was last seen at her store. The big question of who saw her last would be turned into who was her last customer. And the answer to that question was, as you'd expect, our boy Ed Gain. Hmm who had been seen going into the store to buy a gallon of antifreeze. Casual. Guy that's all by himself, doesn't go anywhere. What does he need antifreeze for? You know. What is antifreeze used for? Isn't it going in your car? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Wait. Where does this take place? Wisconsin. Does it snow in Wisconsin? Yeah. Okay. But he doesn't use his... He doesn't go anywhere. I don't know geography. Okay. <laughs> when the p- Wait! Yes. We have listeners in Wisconsin. Yes. <gasps> Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> when the police caught wind of this potential lead, they would, of course, go to Ed Gaines' farmhouse and pay him a visit, do some questioning, and see what's going on. Mm. However, when they got to the farmhouse, they suddenly found themselves in the middle of a nightmare. What the police found is what would be the backbone of inspiration for the aforementioned movies like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The movie's fucking horrifying. The plus side of the story is the police immediately found who they were looking for, Bernice Warden. She would be in Ed's kitchen. However, the downside of the story is she was dead, Mm -hmm. decapitated, Mm -hmm. and hung by her ankles from the rafters above, and her torso was, quote, dressed out like a deer i which if you want to know what dress out like a deer is I hate that. i'm glad you asked what that is i hate that it's the process of removing the internal organs of hunted game which is necessary to obtain I and hate preserve that you just meat referred to a human from the wild as animal. hunted game no 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 i no, wasn't no, no, referring no. to the animal i was saying i was telling you what dress out like a deer meant i know i know i know but i hate yeah, that yeah, in yeah. the circumstances she's referred to as hunted game yeah, i yeah. hate that Amongst the house were countless bones, both whole and fragmented about, skulls impaled on his bedpost, even household items that Ed had made from human skin. And a nipple belt. And a nipple belt. Mm -hmm. The police would continue on to find chairs, a trash bin, leggings, masks, belts, window shade drawstrings, corsets, and even a lampshade that were all made out of skins in various parts of the body. And a nipple belt. And a nipple belt. Wait, he made leggings? I didn't know he made leggings. He essentially made, like, a whole skin suit, yeah. I knew that. <laughs> I didn't know that he made leggings. I, I yeah, feel just like... a, his favorite cozy pair of leggings he put <laughs> just, on. just, I hate that. And he's lounging at home. I know, like, pants. I get that, because obviously that's part of the suit. But the fact that they're leggings, that means that they're literally skin tight. I yeah. 
hate that. They're his, you know, chilling around. Uh, no. In addition to the skin-made items, police would find various dismembered body parts, including fingernails, four noses, the genitalia of nine different women, and even the remains of a tavern keeper who had gone missing in 1954, known as Mary Hogan. What did he do with the genitalia? Probably Was it just fucked like- it. <laughs> I hated that. I... No. Am I wrong? No, no. Uh, I hope so. I hope it was just like on a shelf somewhere i hope he didn't do that <laughs> he was alone babe i hope it was just on a shelf somewhere i hope what i thought was okay i hope he just put it on a shelf somewhere i hope he did not do that <laughs> ed would admit to police that he had collected most of his remains found in the home from three local graveyards which he started visiting only two years after his mother's death oh a necrophiliac he said we go into these graveyards in a bit of a daze, looking out for bodies that he thought would closely resemble that of his own mother. Oh, he wanted to fuck his mom. Mm. <laughs> when explaining why he did all this, Ed would go on to say that he wanted to create a, quote, woman suit so that he could become his mother and quite literally crawl into her skin. As for a full list of what was found inside the home, some of which I already mentioned, it goes as follows. So... Brace yourself. I'm laughing because I'm uncomfortable. Let's I just know. say that right now. <laughs> they found whole human bones and fragments, a wastebasket made of human skin, human skin covering several chair seats, skulls on his bedposts, female skulls, some of with the top sewn off, bowls made from human skulls, a corset made from a female torso skinned from shoulders to waist, leggings made from human leg skin, so quite literally leggings that's not funny <laughs> <laughs> the joke you're trying to make is not funny but you laughed mass made I'm from uncomfortable <laughs> i laugh when i'm uncomfortable <laughs> we have to make joke of the the bad joke of the bad <laughs> <laughs> the, the, never mind masks made from the skin of human fuck fuck ah. <laughs> masks made from the skin of female heads mm. mary hogan's face mask in a paper bag Mary Hogan's skull in a box, Bernice Warden's entire head in a burlap sack, Bernice Warden's head in a plastic bag in front of Gaines' potbelly stove, nine volve in a shoebox. What is that? What? Volve. Well, vulva. What is that? But, huh? What is that? Essentially, like, what you would expect, like, the vagina. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. I thought so. Enough. <laughs> a young girl's dress... <laughs> And the vulvas of two females judged to have been about 15 years old. Why do you keep saying that? <laughs> it's in the notes. I told you to brace yourself. Oh, wait, I do have it in. A belt made from female human nipples. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, that just didn't stick out to me when I was doing Jesus these notes. Jesus Christ. How did that? Oh, well, I guess in context, it wouldn't. <laughs> because... <laughs> For me, <laughs> everything else wiped from my mind. I was like, the nipple belt is enough for me to stand out. I didn't think, no. I knew the brutality of everything else, but I was just like, you know, compartmentalizing. I was like, the nipple belt? Yes, yeah, nipple belt. <laughs> Four noses, <laughs> a pair of lips on a window shade drawstring. So imagine the window shade like things that you just, you know. I know to, you don't believe in ghosts, lips. but just imagine how many ghosts are in his fucking house. <laughs> Could you imagine him? Mm-mm, no, never mind. A lampshade made from the skin of a human face and fingernails from female fingers. The fact that he has, like, bowls made of people's skulls makes me think that he eats cereal out of them. And just the fact of ghosts of people standing around eating cereal out of that. The ghosts in that house are probably fucking pissed. Oh, easy. So, as can be paranormal investigations in that fucking house. I'm down. As can be expected, following the visit from police, Ed Gain or the butcher of Plainfield would be arrested. In 1957, he would actually be found not guilty. Hello. On the terms of insanity, and be sent to the Central State Hospital for the criminally insane, where he would go on to be diagnosed with schizophrenia. Not too long after this, his farmhouse that he lived in since a child, and he committed all these heinous acts in, would mysteriously be burned down to the ground i would still to be turn, fair i would still they probably roam around the, they probably did that shit on purpose yeah, i would still roam around the, the lot they probably just home. couldn't fucking be sold and they're probably just like just right. burn that shit down fast forward 10 years ed gain would finally be deemed fit to stand trial and be convicted of the murder of bernice warden however the conviction would be just solely for bernice warden 
He would not go on to be tried for Mary Hogan's murder because at the time, the state just saw that as a waste of money, reasoning that Ed was insane and would spend the rest of his life in hospitals anyways. Which, what the fuck, because give Mary's family some fucking closure? Also, for the shit that he did in the first place, obviously he's fucking insane and obviously he has issues, but he clearly did some shit just fucking execute him like that is the that, that is the person who should get the capital punishment right. like there should be no trial they should have been like oh get this fucking guy out of here mm-hmm. like don't even put him in the hospital don't even give him help he's get, yeah, fucking passed get out. Him out there's no re- rehabilitation in that man whatsoever no. there's no no reason to rehabilitate him because that's the whole point of the legal system is like try and rehabilitate i don't mm-hmm. know why that word's hard to say <laughs> try and rehabilitate these people but like when you get <laughs> no no see ya <laughs> no the most chilling aspect of the story is we will never know just exactly how many people Ed had murdered. He himself only admits to killing two people, Bernice and Mary. And the rest of the human items found around his house was simply just from the graves he robbed. No other murders. So do we take this criminally insane man's word at face value and assume he only killed two people? Or does he have more victims like his brother from years past and who knows how many others? Were the bones truly from graves, or is that just a cover-up? Even so, that's still fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. Isn't All that I'm... still a crime, though? Huh? Isn't that still a crime? Yeah, grave robbing's a crime. No, but just, like, doing that to a dead body, isn't that still a crime? What? Like, what's the word I'm Grave looking... robbing? No, like, defiling a human body, isn't that still, like, a dead human body, isn't that still a crime? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, fuck him. Sorry. All I know is we will never know exactly what happened and what the number is. As Ed passed away in 1984 due to respiratory failure due to lung cancer. Oh, what a shame. But if anything, he was the catalyst for some spine-chilling movies, and just knowing more about him and the real-life crimes that he committed really makes watching these shows and movies that much scarier. I can honestly tell you, I would sleep perfectly fine at night not knowing anymore about what he did i if i could go my whole life just knowing about the nipple belt i would have been just peachy <laughs> i don't know babe you got nipple belt and more i don't want to know you're welcome more. i don't want to know more. that's what i'm here for oh thanks and with that that's my story today <laughs> wow yay <laughs> <laughs> jesus fucking christ how does that make you feel i'm unhappy why a lot of reasons a lot of people mm. <laughs> mm. i got a point <laughs> no but that was i obviously have watched texas chainsaw massacre and like all of those all of those movies because i'm just i love scary movies and stuff so that's that's like my jam and I've always seen, like, the based on a true story, like, at the beginning, but I never actually went in depth to figure out what that true story was. So being able to do this for me was fun because I got to learn more about what that true story just was. And then I regretted learning about what that true story was. <laughs> I was going to say, and because do you regret it's it? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's no longer just a movie and made for fun. It's actually what happened, and that's disgusting. I agree. I do hate the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie franchise as a whole because, one, you'll never catch me ever, for never, ever, forever, always driving anywhere near anything that ever resembles the landscape of anything that looks like those movies. <laughs> ever. <laughs> ever. So never going into rural towns? Never. Never. No. For that exact reason. Never. Populous cities only. O- only. Never. I will never go into anywhere like that ever. If I do not have cell service, no. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. First world problems are my problems. <laughs> fair. That's why zombie apocalypse, I'm clocking out. Um, two, if I go anywhere and my body is ever like, ah, I'm absolutely out. I'm gone. If anybody's like, no, no, no. I'm like, get out of the car then. You're, you're, you can stay. I'm leaving. <laughs> Goodbye. I'm making executive decisions. I'm in charge. Goodbye. Two. Well, that Three. was two. Three. <laughs> Counting is difficult for us. Absolutely not. Mm. Absolutely not, no. Even that, when we took the road trip to Florida, I was like, keep my eye on the gas. I was like, oh, we have 40 miles left in the tank. We need to get gas in 20 miles. <laughs> like, we are, I'm not playing this game with you people. Like, no. I'm not breaking down the side of the road. 
No, absolutely not. Nope. People are stupid. And the black person always gets killed first. I know that I'm mixed. Oh, my God. I know that I'm mixed and not 100%. But I'm just saying, that counts in movie deals. Like, I'm still a little black, so I would still be the black person that gets killed. And I'm... mm, No. (laughs) Absolutely not. (laughs) Absolutely not. (laughs) Anywho. (laughs) Anyways, I got nothing else to add. Anywho is a rules... (laughs) I think it's your turn, and you get to follow up whatever all that was. <laughs> Mine is way less traumatizing. <laughs> Yay! We end on a good note. I got a point. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Okay. So let me cite my sources for today. My sources today are NewEngland.com, the SmithsonianMag.com, and AllThingsInteresting.com. Okay? I love that site. <laughs> I know Shout you out do. to that site. Honestly. Okay, so again, today my story is a paranormal story. So, hey, Paul. Hi. You know how much I love shitty jokes? <laughs> well, Nor told me this joke the other day. I'm clocking out already. <laughs> and it actually inspired me to cover today's story. Do you want to hear it? I don't have a choice, so. I know. Do you know why there aren't a lot of vampire pregnancies? Why? Because they have to be invited to come inside. <laughs> You're so proud of that joke. That was Nora's joke. <laughs> that, was Nora's joke. that wasn't even my joke. <laughs> do vampires actually have to be invited to come inside? Yeah, it's part of the... But do you get it? No, I get it. <laughs> You're talking about coming in the vagina, but I'm talking about like coming to a house. Yeah, like, that's part of the legend. Oh. Yeah. Um, so, with that being said, <laughs> I died when they texted me this joke. <laughs> so, today, but I'm... you're here. So, today, <laughs> I'm or are going you a vampire? To, and so, today, <laughs> yeah, I am going I to did, cover... You did say let me in, and I let you into my house. Are you a vampire? Hmm. We'll find out on next week's episode of Isn't That a... <laughs> Are you done? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so today, <laughs> I'm going to cover a story that is coined as, quote, the last New England vampire. That's today's story. Hmm. Ah, the good old 1800s. <laughs> <laughs> it was a ah for it gets, me. It gets so much better. Just, just wait. Oh. It was totally a great time period, right? You know? With, in- with inventions like the steam locomotive, the battery, photography, sewing machines, dynamite, the telephone, the first practical car using the internal combustion engine, and Coca-Cola. I mean, what more could you want? If you it's could just- funny because didn't Coca-Cola actually use real Coke at that time? Yes. Yeah. So if you could just ignore, you know, the wars, the ableism, the racism, and the sexism, it could be like a really amazing time period, you know? Oh, and, like, definitely the consumption. Consumption, also known as tuberculosis, was totally not fun. (laughs) The symptoms of this included fatigue, night sweats, coughing up of white phlegm or foamy blood, chest pains, fever. It sounded like a real crowd pleaser, if you ask me. Love that. I regret (laughs) doing all these stupid fucking jokes in openers because it's rubbing off on you. And it sounds so fucking terrible on the other side. <laughs> I do it now because I know how much you hate it. <laughs> and it's so funny because I do it. What is the phrase? Unironically or ironically? Whatever that is. I do it because you do it. That's why I do it. <laughs> <laughs> not the not the second flip off of the day. That was the third because I just did it earlier. Oh. Yeah. They can't see it. So No. That was a fourth up. Oh, well, we're at like six and now. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, the best part of consumption was that there was no fucking cure. Not one. Doctors would recommend patients get some rest, they eat well, and they, quote, exercise outside. They would exercise outside while coughing up blood, phlegm, and queen. We love that. Absolutely love that. All jokes aside, though, this disease would cause a gruesome death. Thus, it caused people to go kind of crazy. Like, 
it did to the <laughs> I don't know what I was just trying to say I don't know either I don't remember how to pronounce this word Nora's giving me shit about it when I was what doing word? these notes uh, this town in Rhode Island can I see it? yeah Nora's been there so that's why Exeter? 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 Exeter you think? or just say exit her just quick it's like saying pull out, but like sir, a joke. Sir, it's time to exit her. <laughs> that has to stay in. That has to stay in. That has to stay in. <laughs> like it did to the residents of Exeter, Rhode Island, who began to believe that a woman, Mercy Brown, who had died of consumption, was in fact a vampire, tormenting the town and her remaining family members. Good for her. Honestly, Queen. (laughs) George Brown was a local farmer who lived in the town with his family and who was known to everybody. In 1883, numbers are hard for me, (laughs) his wife, Mary Brown, died of a mysterious... Of a mysterious, that's what I meant to say. (laughs) I'm going to say of mysterious. I was like, of a mysterious. Of mysterious. 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 Of mysterious. That should be the new intro. <laughs> we just remix that shit. Ew. Just with the intro, we just like, of mysterious. Of a mysterious. God damn, 47. Okay. <laughs> in, <laughs> in 1883, his wife, Mary Brown, died of mysterious circumstances. And six months later, George's 20-year-old daughter, Mary Olive Brown, fell ill and also died. In the next several years, his 19-year-old daughter, Mercy Brown, who I just talked about earlier, also died. And his teenage son, Edwin Brown, became sick. So within, like, a handful of years, his whole family is just kicking the fucking bucket. Everybody is dying left and right in this small town. And the town doctor told George that it was consumption that was killing his family. And, shocker, the people of the town had a different idea. Mm -hmm. And the fucking people of the town were being so fucking dramatic. And their idea was... They believed that this old myth was that when members of the same family kept dying from consumption specifically... It was because one of the deceased was draining the life force from their remaining living family members. Which totally, in hindsight, makes sense. That one of the deceased family members was just coming up out of the grave, leaving the graveyard, and sucking the life out of sick family members. That totally makes sense. When you think about it, you know? (laughs) That's them. I apologize on Paul's behalf. (laughs) That's them sucking. Delicioso. <laughs> That's some after second. <laughs> so, on, shut up. So, on March 17th, 1892, a group of men entered the Exeter Chestnut Hill Cemetery. And they entered the cemetery with full intentions of exhuming the bodies of George's wife, Miss Mary Brown, and his daughters, Mary and Mercy. First, they dug up Miss Brown and then Mary. They found the bodies properly decomposed, and by bodies, I mean they found skeletons. Let's be honest here. They've been dead for a decent amount of time. So then they moved on to Mercy's grave. Now, at this point, Mercy had been buried for nine weeks. So her body should have shown a lot of signs of decomposition. But when they dug up her body, there in her grave, she was oddly well-preserved. Her hair and nails appeared to have grown as well, And they basically, like, nudged her body with a shovel. And the bitch, like, to be like, bitch, are you alive? Like, they were like, beep, beep. Like, you know, because she looked like she was alive, like her body. Mm -hmm. And they found she was, quote, full of fresh blood. Oh. So, quick recap. She was not, (laughs) she was not decomposed in the slightest. Her nails and her hair looked like it had been growing still. And she was full of blood. So, to be honest, correct. She's a vampire. Valid. Mm -hmm. Valid concerns. Mm -hmm. So the men did the only thing that they could rationally think of at the time. Throw her in the river. And they ripped her heart out of her chest and they burned it on a nearby rock. (laughs) Because they are rational thinking individuals. That's the only thing they could think to do. They also removed her river. (laughs) 
<laughs> river. It's because you said river. That's why. I said <laughs> they also removed her liver. <laughs> And they also burned that as well. They removed her river? Yeah. Mom said. <laughs> Mom said I remove your river. <laughs> they then, for whatever fucking reason, decided to add the ashes of her burned heart and her burned liver into her younger brother um, Edwin's medicine. Because, again, they believed that she was stealing his life force. In some, like, fucking Vampire Diaries ass way. If you've ever seen Vampire Diaries, that is some Vampire Diaries ass fucking witchcraft. Um, they thought it would heal him. Spoiler alert, it did not. Edwin ended up passing two months later. Um, now, the inner skeptic in me comes out in the story. Because, like, oh, I wonder why all these people are fucking dying. Mm-hmm. Like, it's only the fucking 1800s. Like, did you people even wash your fucking hands? Probably not. Or, like, did you even fucking shower? No. Of course, all these TV's people are fucking... TV's just running rampant at that point. Exactly. Like, you doctors are saying, go outside, get some fresh air. Like, there's no medicine. There's no cures. Like, of course these people are right. fucking dying. But the fact still stands that her body showed, quote, no signs of decomposition. But at the time, even the town doctor and historians explain this away as saying her body was buried during the winter months. So it kind of explains that there's nothing supernatural at the time. I don't know, man. Oh, well, look at you. And by bang- <laughs> by saying it's buried during the winter months, I mean, so she gets buried and then it's like one of the coldest months of the year. So it being cold kind of like freezes her body like it's put in a deep freezer. So that's why her body showed no signs of decomp. So by the time her mother and her sister die, they get put in the ground, they decomp. She gets put in the ground, it snows, it preserves her body, it thaws by March. By the time they dig her up, she hasn't had time to decomp yet because the ground just thawed out, so that's why her body was so preserved. I, I guess. Well, you can say you guess, but it's, it's scientifically proven that's what happened. Because I had the same exact thought. I was like, well, why the fuck did her body look like that? I was like, why the fuck did her body look like that? And then I looked into it. I was like, oh, okay. I think doctors are gaslighting me, but that's fine. You know if Paul believes in it, then it's true. (laughs) (laughs) But this story takes place at the end of the, quote, vampire craze that was sweeping across our still developing nation, kind of like the witch hunts that were happening in Salem. There is one key piece of information to take away from this case is that the people of the 1800s were fucking stupid. I just want to leave the story off on one little fun fact before I end this today is that Nor, our lovely research assistant, visited this cemetery where um, this little story takes place on their 13th birthday and they love spooky shit. And that's where I got this little recommendation today. So shout out to Nor. Thank you. And that is the end of my story today. So it's a little quick one, but it's nice <laughs> after Paul's gruesome <laughs> fucking story. <laughs> hmm. But yeah. <laughs> Hmm. It was quick. I think she's a vampire. It was quick, but it was cute. She's a vampire with all the fresh young blood. So that's why her body stayed young. So I'm like, that's what I was like. When I was researching it. It's like Hocus Pocus. Listen, when I was generally also, researching this it. this voice is the one. Oh, okay. I see it now. That Brenna was talking about. Oh, okay. <laughs> I see it now. When I was researching it generally, I was like, I understand why they're concerned, though, because why the fuck, why was, she, why did she still have blood in her body, and why was she not decomposed? And then when they were explaining, like, the scientific behind, like, oh, you know, like, when the ground's frozen, like, your body's decomposed, I was like, oh, that does make sense. So I was like, okay, yeah. But for a hot second, I was like, okay, she is a vampire. What about it? Like, you know? But then, yeah. I just want to believe she's a vampire. Me too, yeah. Yeah. So she's a vampire. So watch out, kids. I just think it's so funny, though, because it was like, the only logical explanation they had was like, oh, she's a vampire, rip her fucking heart out. <laughs> like, yeah, it's just a little <laughs> overdramatic for me. It's but. just so fucking funny. It's also like, oh, everybody has consumption. Someone must be coming up out of the fucking ground in the cemetery. Like, it's definitely not the Was illness. her heart pumping, though? That's the question. I'm assuming not, because she's fucking dead. Yeah, I know. But that should have, like, told them right there. Yeah, I know. I'm assuming not. They're mm-hmm. just, like I just told no. you, they're, they were all fucking I was stupid. expecting you to, like, do the old witch trick where they would tie the cinder box to the feet and, like, throw them in the river. No, they were fucking stupid. They just said, no, give me your heart. Also, no, isn't this, is, it- this was in Rhode Island. They're stupid. Not in Massachusetts and Salem. No, I know, but that's... I thought they were still going to take, like, Our the Rhode old, Island like, listeners are going to be like, bitch, what did you just say? The, uh, <laughs> the old, like, witch trick of, like, throwing them in the river. No, no, no. Seeing no. if they float. Um, no, we'll cover it. But it's Salem- like a stake to the heart, but instead they just said, no, give me your heart. Yeah, well, they set it on fire and they turned it into ashes, so I guess. Hmm. 
and then they injected it into her brother so they're like you can't come back if the medicine's in his system but then it killed him anyway so i mean like it still did it yeah um we'll Dummies. cover the salem witch trials in another episode that's coming at some eventually. point you'll see it eventually it's planned it's that's planned. as far as we can say yeah because that's as far as we got yeah <laughs> You'll get it when you get it's it, Ben. It's plant. Yeah, you'll get it when you get it, Ben. Um, but yeah, that was a great story. Thanks I did tell you it was going to be quick, but I was like, it's funny, though. <laughs> I enjoy it. Um, but yeah, that overall wraps up yeah. everything we got for this little episode of episode the Isn't That Hot Podcast. 19, episode 19, I think this is, yeah. It, yeah, 18, yeah, yeah. Episode 19. So <laughs> thanks, as always, for joining us yeah. for this lovely Tuesday, because you're listening on Tuesday. Of course you are. Um, for this episode you can follow us on our socials at isn't that odd pod on twitter and instagram and isn't that odd podcast on facebook and then if you have any recommendations for a story whether true crime conspiracy or paranormal you can find in the show links a google form that you can give a recommendation for us and we might just speak about it on a future podcast if you have any comments, questions, concerns, or if you just want to conversate with us, you can email us at isn't that odd at gmail.com. Wait, isn't that odd podcast at gmail.com? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, isn't that odd pod at gmail.com? I don't fucking know, man. I don't know. It's in the show notes, too. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Everything you need is in the show notes. <laughs> That's all we got. Um, and like always, thank you to our research assistant, Noor, for giving any necessary information this week. It seems like it was a Brianna story, so thank mm-hmm. you for them this week, last week, and all the other weeks mm-hmm. and the future mm-hmm. weeks to come. Mm-hmm. Um, but until next time, we hope you enjoyed this episode. We'll see you next week on a new episode of Isn't That Odd Podcast. And until then, don't be a douchebag. Don't be a dick. Be a menace, but do good things. Happy Pride Month, Queens. And happy Pride. Slay the gay... No. I was going to say slay, slay the, the day gaze. Away. I was going to say slay. slay the gaze away and slay, I was like that's not correct. Slay the day away, be an ally. Don't be ally. a ally. <laughs> you scared me. Don't be a fucking bigoted dickhead. Yeah, if you are, stop listening to our podcast and go eat some dicks because you deserve it. Go eat a bag of dicks. Oh, you know what you should do? Uh you should go to the website not sponsored. This isn't sponsored. You should send a bag of dicks to somebody. And then, so they get a bag of dicks in the mail. It's like gummy dicks. And so they could eat a bag of dicks. You should do that. Yeah. And then you should sign it from Isn't the Odd Podcast. And so, yeah. like, that'll be like, yeah, do that from us. Yeah. We're not going to pay it. You pay for it. But. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs>